Hey guys, Sweet Three is here. This is JJ, everybody. This is uh, the audience. JJ, meet the audience. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> it just happened. You guys have all now officially met JJ, and now I can talk to us about AI Sweet Three. I've heard a lot about it. I use AI Sweet Two a lot, and a lot of people out there. Do they look at things like this and like, is this marketing jargon? Do people actually use software? Yeah. And is it any good? So it looks quite a bit more unified. Tell me what we got going on right here. Sure. So if you take a look here at the uh, interface of the program, we've got a lot going on, uh, but we've tried to lay it out in a really sensible and intuitive way. So the key thing first and foremost is to give you persistent information. So we've got everything here in these panels down below, which gives you CPU frequency, uh, your DRAM frequency, your multiplier, your BCK, even your actual power consumption for your CPU. You can go ahead and check per core, and you can go ahead and expand this to take a look at your actual CPU utilization. Uh, in the next chunk right here, we've got an actual representation of all the voltage information for your CPU real time, so that's a nice uh, additional point of information. Then you have temperature graphing uh, for the CPU and for the motherboard. Now keep in mind for the CPU temperature, this isn't going to be the same as third-party programs that register the DTS sensors, uh, which keep in mind they're not based for accurate-based temperature monitoring, they're just there for thermal throttle management. Mm -hmm. um, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to have a CPU a thermosistor that's actually built into the CPU socket, and we're going to take that information and we're we're going to create an offset by taking the temperature that's also reported from the CPU in what's called the TCAS. So what essentially that just means is that altogether we're going to give you a more representative big picture of the thermal temperature of kind of your socket and your CPU versus just reading those DTS-based sensors. Yeah, you still need to be concerned around upper 80s, 90s. Yes, 100%. There's still not going to be a question that if you get into high temperatures, you're going to want to consider either adding additional cooling, maybe ramping with the fans. But of course, with our fan technology, that's going to take care of that for you. Um, from there, of course, we also have full readouts on all your fan information. And you can go in here and you can set trigger points uh, to each one of these corresponding values, whether it's going to be voltages, temperatures, fan speeds, and make all those adjustments, as well as make quick settings for Celsius versus Fahrenheit. Okay, now, Andy. Uh, and for this section, for optimization, we're going to have a separate video that covers uh, really one really key thing. On a large amount of our motherboards, of course, the majority of them all feature AI Suite 3, as well as our dual intelligent processors design. So along with our digital power management support for the fiber and the digital power controller we put on the motherboard, we have our TPU uh, hardware IC and our EPU hardware IC. So all this, together with our advanced UEFI, works together to automatically tune and profile your system. So we've taken automated overclocking, we've taken full fan expert calibration, We've taken power management optimization with EPU and then all the VRM power management adjusts and rolled them all into one application. So we're going to quickly show you how these applications work that if you want to manually tweak and tune them, you could do that all real time with an AI Suite 3. But in 4-way optimization, it's going to show you how we actually do that all in one step yeah, for you. If you guys want to check out a video on 4-way optimization, uh, we decided to make one for you. And you guys can click on the link right there and check it out. Definitely. Um, so you, you'll actually see all this information is filled in real time when we actually complete the 4-way optimization. But some cool points of data that you'll see is one, how much it's actually overclocked your system. You'll be able to highlight over each one of the fan headers and be able to see how much it's actually tuned and optimized each one of them. Uh, you'll be able to see how we've made changes to the power management settings for the VRM. Uh, even in the EPU, we'll make changes to how the power consumption works for when the CPU is in a way mode or in an idle state mm -hmm. where we can actually bring down the power consumption. And you even have cool new options where we can go ahead and turn off the power to supplemental controllers like the secondary SATA or USB ports when there's nothing being written or read to them so that we can go ahead and conserve additional power. Yeah, and so that's really like if you're not using the as media controller, it's not going to control the Intel um, because it's on, on the chip. Correct. I mean, it's on the uh, uh, the chipset. Mm -hmm. and, and then from there, we have some additional uh, information on the wattage for the CPU and some general power savings, as well as qu quick profiles that you can log into that immediately make those adjustments for you. Mm -hmm. Now, if we go into the TPU section, this handles kind of all the overclocking aspects, and there's really robust. You can make full real-time adjustment to the BCLK frequency, to the multipliers, to the cache ratio. You can do group tuning where you, if you make an adjustment, it happens to every single one of the cores in unison, or you can go ahead and do things like per core tuning where maybe I want to have one. Change the multiplier yeah. on one individual one or two of them. Exactly, mm -hmm. and I can then maybe go to, let's say two, keep that to also 44, but for three, I'm going to go ahead and do 45, and I'm also going to do, excuse me, uh, uh, 45 on this one and so you know you could set it any way you want you know uh, keep in mind that always the primary ratios have to at least be higher than the ratios below um, right. but you're gonna have a lot okay. of flexibility in being able to tune those now you can also go here and make all your full real-time adjustments either in adaptive modes which are the most efficient and effective way to handle your system mm -hmm. um, or manual where we're keeping everything static now that's gonna use more power and get a little hotter uh, definitely yes uh, so you do want to be conscientious of that uh, but we want to give you the flexibility in both now you have full slider control 
control where we can make adjustments to this. But one of the, red. Yeah, but one of the cool things you can see right here is going to be that we actually have a color gradient. Um, so if let's say I went ahead and defined this in and I went to something like 1.2 uh, volts, right? it would actually go ahead and color code that for me, as well as you saw that I don't have to use a slider. I can manually enter things in. So but, you're gonna know if you're getting into a, you know the, the red zone, it's bad. Because a lot of people, they're gonna open this up and they're gonna be like, ooh, turn it all the way up. And yeah. that's not what you should be doing. You definitely shouldn't be doing that. I mean, and the thing is not everybody's like me and has had the opportunity to work with literally, you know, hundreds of CPUs and had the opportunity to go through the platform and know every single variable. Most people are gonna gum into this for the first time and not necessarily know what are my safe ranges. And here it's very very simple. I can just go ahead and start to make adjustments to the slider and see, okay, I just went from safe to a moderate to the, you know, uh, a, you know, a higher level of voltage to then an extreme level of voltage, right? So keeping that in mind helps you to really kind of get great the sense, hey, am I really going more than I should be? You know, have I checked enough? It just allows, allows you to have that flexibility of tuning it, but in a safe and easy and effective way. Yeah, if you're getting into the purple and the red, you need like good water cooling. Right? You need extraordinary cooling and, and you need to be conscious of that there's still the fact that you could be driving significantly more voltage than is healthy for the CPU in the long term because when you do apply over voltage, there's always the reality that you can compromise yeah. or even and damage your CPU yeah, part. Yeah, you can shorten the life, that's not good. Yeah. Um, so of course we have some other options in terms of making a changes to voltage to the cache ratio and things along those lines. We also have the CPU strap, which we can adjust. Hey, it's um, back. Yeah, it's, uh, well, it, it wasn't present in the previous mainstream, but it was present on X79. X79, yeah. So we have that option for guys that really want to have the flexibility of tweaking and tuning more advanced memory dividers and things like that, but it's not going to be real time. Um, so when you make that adjustment, the board doesn't needs to fully reset that value, so it has to reboot. Uh, right. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if we jump into the, let's say, the EPU power management options, there's some really cool ones such as voltage uh, reductions, where if we go ahead and go to manual, it'll automatically tune the CPU to lose less voltage. The standard voltage reduction actually will not affect performance. It's an only algorithm to work with the CPU frequency that you're at. Um, but we do have more advanced functions where if, oh, let's say, we, go, yes, that's what I was looking where for, we yeah. go to, like, let's say, the max power saving, not only can you do things like voltage decrease to the CPU, but you can also even readjust the entire TDP or the power wattage consumption marker. So if you want your CPU to work at 50 watts, 40 watts, 30 watts, 20 watts, we'll make all those adjustments for you. And it will, of course, make adjustments to the maximum CPU frequency. So it will come down in performance, but you're going to be using significantly lower power. Yeah, and if you guys are trying to run it at 10 TDP, and then you start complaining that you can't run Crisis 3, don't come crying to us. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to happen. Um, you also have the ability to have some really cool tuning parameters, such as being able to make adjustments to the monitor, sleep settings, and, pro and fan profiles for those corresponding levels of your system, whether it's in idle or in a waste state. Now, uh, lastly, to round things out here in terms of power management, is we have VRM customization. So you can go in and adjust things like OCP hmm. capabilities, all the phase response options, uh, the thermal control, the voltage frequencies, all these type of things. Now, by default, the board has extraordinary ordinary auto rules. You, yeah, we don't need, you don't need to worry about tweaking and tuning. This is really just for people that want to have, sometimes have that minutia level of control to be able to tweak, tweak and tune it the way that they want. Yeah. And uh, for you guys that don't necessarily know what some of these options may do, there is some information that's listed here on the side that helps you understand it. Um, but if you guys are more interested, it will actually be releasing a forum guide here in, in the Tech Syndicate forums. So if you guys want to read about how to tweak and tune all these settings and exactly what they do, you can make sure to check out that OC guide. Uh, or watch the overclocking yeah, tutorial. The overclocking tutorial. Link. Yeah. Right there. Uh, we also, of course, because we have a digital controller that's on the board for the DRAM, we have those DRAM options. And then lastly, we continue to offer, of course, our advanced Fan Expert 2 technology. So we have always talked about how our boards have really advanced level fan controls. All the headers support 3-pin and 4-pin control in the UEFI or in the OS. In the OS, though, it's really advanced, right? Because we have a full auto calibration technology. It profiles and tunes every single one of the fans for you. Maximum RPM, minimum RPM, logs all that information and send it to each one of the headers that you can then go ahead and tune it for let's say um, you know performance standard silent full speed you can go in here and make tweaks and tunes to things like the fan curve if you want to go ahead and set it to ramp only certain frequencies uh, based excuse me that would occur at certain temperatures you could do that you could go ahead and even adjust the response time for how it goes up or how it comes down and that helps to control how aggressive the yeah, fan how, sounds how, how much it's ramping because it can be jarring if it goes from like zero to 50 or zero to 60 like that yeah it's like, yeah you, you definitely don't want it to go from like let's say like a thousand rpm to like three thousand rpm sounds like a vacuum abruptly turning right on, yeah, exactly like, so you can even control that or you can go into rpm mode and maybe you just want to have one of your fans fixed as an intake so you could keep that maybe targeted at like a thousand rpm or like 12 15 1500 rpm something quiet but always consistently bringing an airflow in 
Now, you can also go ahead and let's say, uh, click on different portions and you can make it further adjustments and map it to where you want it. You can also go ahead and relabel the actual fan headers to where they're corresponding into the chassis, such as we could relabel this to our back exhaust fan. Yeah, this is um, really handy. Or you could label it to specific items. Like if you want to call your CPU cooler, like for us, we're using this high performance Noctua NH14 uh, cooler. You could go ahead and relabel it that. What, yeah, put whatever you want. Makes it really easy, really simple to work with and advanced level of control. So um, altogether, that represents, you know, those four independent modules, which are of course a part of the four-way optimization technology. And rounding it out, we still have all those classic features that are going to be present on so many of our boards, such as USB 3 boost, which enhances storage performance for external flash devices. Uh, our storage devices, we have network eye control, which you can go in. A QoS. A QoS. Right here in the software. Exactly. So you can go ahead and make tweaks and tunes and adjustments to improve, let's say, your web browser or let's say your gaming applications, streaming applications, whatever it might be, right? Uh, USB BIOS flashback is an easy way to go ahead and create the file that you'll need for a USB uh, update or recovery. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got, the, of course, the easy update, which will update software, system information, and even USB charger, which allows you to quick charge smartphones, tablets, e-readers, uh, and it doesn't matter what operating system they are, whether it's in sleep, a hibernation, or even the system's off, you can do that. I got one more question for you. Um, now, I know there's a lot of different, like, I guess a lot of different applications packed into this one suite. Mm -hmm. um, now, before, you would see lots of different processes. Is that still the case? I mean, mm -hmm. how, how are you controlling what's going on with Windows? Um, it's actually a pretty straightforward process. I mean, these services aren't active unless you initialize into the service protocol itself. Mm -hmm. And if you actually take a look at even their task manager, so if we actually... Uh, Go ahead and leave it, and we don't do anything. We've got an actual uh, recording mechanism running on screen. Yeah, we're screen. running open broadcaster um, right now. But overall, if you were to take a look at the CPU utilization, we've averaged the CPU load to be within about a percent to 2% uh, loading. It's extremely light. It's not going to affect performance. It's not going to affect latency on your system. It's very, very solid in terms of not only being robust and responsive, but giving you a huge degree of flexibility. And if you take a look at the features that it's providing, you know we really do recommend that to get the best out of our motherboards, you should be running the ASV3 software. Very good. Uh, if you guys want to check out a few more videos on the software, actually you should check them out. Uh, you definitely want to see the four-way optimization video. So we're going to get pretty nerdy there. And then, if you want to take it a step farther, as far as the nerdiness goes, check out the UEFI overview. But everything on the screen. There's a lot of software and a lot of really cool products, so check them out. JJ, thank you very much for the uh, overview. Thank you.